Have you found have you found that form yet? I hope, I hope. <laughs> Welcome to the Tour of Turkey. Where well we're coming back for a second year. Quite a different Turkey to last year. Much stronger field, just seen Quintana and uh Buani, so our care have bought their like hit squad. We have a hit squad. Guy Nev, Itamar Einhorn, who's our sprinter. Paddy Bevan, Corbin Strong, myself, which means also Rick and Branley. Big focus on lead outs, big focus on getting a tan. The term holiday race is banded around a lot. Now I'm not saying this is a holiday race because this I think now, given the caliber of the field, is a Giro prep race. What a holiday race is, well, is when you go to a holiday destination and race. Yeah, there's the sea, there's resorts. We're staying in resorts by the sea. And if it wasn't for the fact we had to do a bike race, this would be a holiday. Holiday races also include UAE Tour, Tour Down Under, Croatia, Abu Dhabi, now that is UAE tour, holiday destination races. But doesn't make anything, any of it, less easy. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna bring you along for the ride here. Yeah. It's a pre race ride at the moment. I feel awful, awful. I have felt like for the last three days, I haven't been sick, but I've been close. Hey, just a bit run down, training hard. But my spirits have been lifted. Guy Niv said he's never seen me looking as skinny. And then I said I have an incredible ability that isn't well sought after in the pro peloton to lose weight or look like I've lost weight without actually losing any physical weight. I mean, I have, I'm like one or two, one or two kilos down from Italy, San Remo, Torino. So that's good. Yeah, I'm not sure, given the field, that we're gonna see the same GC performances as last year's Tour of Turkey, but yeah, you know, we'll give it a good go. So it's the night before stage one. Um, clocked another difference between this tour of Turkey and the previous tour of Turkey is the hotel's having power cuts. There's a generator running. But the stage starts are a lot earlier. Tomorrow, the stage starts at 9 a.m. Now, I know a lot of you watching will be used to starting at 9 a.m. for a race or a training ride and will think, be thinking, what is the fuss all about? But we are used to midday starts and relaxed mornings. And we've just had the notification of breakfast. The time for breakfast starts with a six. Turkey is two hours ahead of the UK, which means that for me starts with a four. So I'm just like mentally preparing myself for what's to come in the morning. I mean, 200K, but you're not, I'm not gonna start firing until like, I'd say 11 a.m. Turkish time. So about one and the stage is due to finish at two. So just in time for the end, I guess. And if you're a time trialist watching this, you'll be saying, thinking that 9 a.m. is an absolute luxury. So yeah, that's uh, that's what we have. But before uh, we step into the, the racing part of this, I wanted to tell you about something that's it's pretty cool because it's raising money for little bleeders um, and awareness. I've teamed up with Win Your Dream Bike and this website is winyourdreambike.co.uk, which every month they have a super bike not the motorized kind, the cycling kind, but like a top end, top level superbike available to win. You buy a raffle ticket, there's a limit of, I think it's 5,000 raffle tickets. Last month, there was a one in 500 chance of winning. And this month's prize is a factor Ostro of your color of choice. And obviously in your size with black ink wheels. Yeah, it's, it's basically the same bike as we race on. So that's up for grabs. The second place prize is a pair of Bont shoes and the third place is an HJC Furion helmet. So you basically, you can win 
any number of things that I wear, not off my own back, but wear or use. The factor also comes with, this is in conjunction with Vias Velo, who are Factor's exclusive dealer in the UK. Also comes with a bike fit, an ID match bike fit. That's worth 240 quid. So you go and you basically make sure you've got the right sized uh, superbike. Tickets cost five pounds. You can buy as many as you like. A portion of the money earned will be going to Little Bleeders, which is great. Very grateful to them. And also grateful to Vias Velo and Factor and Bond and HJC for putting up these prizes. Like I said, website is winyourdreambike.co.uk. Uh, there's probably some things I should tell you about gambling and, you know, entering this. You're not guaranteed to win, but you, know, you could get a bike for five pounds, uh, uh, eight plus grand bike for five pounds, which is good. And yeah, and you know, there's, there's a feel good factor around it as well because of charity. Every month they support a different charity. So in the next month it'll be a different brand bike, obviously inferior, but a different brand bike and a different charity. So it's, it's a real nice project, I think. You can find all the details on all my social channels. That all went out the other day, so you can see that if you need more. And like I said, yeah, it'll all head straight to their website. So thank you very much to them for agreeing to help Little Bleeders with this month's competition. Anyway, back to the race. I'm rooming with Corbin Strong, the youngster. I roomed with him in his first uh, experience with the team in Israel. And that's as much as I've roomed with him. So, um, I feel like I've roomed with him another time. No, two camps. I'd roomed with him in December camp and I roomed with him in Israel camp. Yeah, he's good. He's fine. He's been a bit unwell lately, um, but he's he's a Neo pro. He's very young. So he's, um, they put him with the old guy on the team to help navigate him through. Although we do have another Kiwi on the team, Paddy. So maybe they could have put the Kiwis together and yeah, that, that that would have made sense as well. So, but Brandley rooms with Rick, so they can speak in their mother languages together. Uh, Guy Niv rooms with Itama, so they can speak in their mother languages together. And Paddy's got his solo room, and that's probably not a reflection on his personality. I would say it's not. Maybe he requested it. Sometimes riders do put in requests saying like, "Can I room with this guy?" Or like, quite rare because everyone on this team in the most part gets on. Sometimes you're putting a request to say, can I not room with this person? And then, you know, like rooming with someone's quite intense. Sometimes it could be because I like them and I don't want to ever not like them, so I don't want to room with them. You know, that could be a motivation for not rooming with someone as well. I've put in the odd request at times, mostly to room with someone, never to not room with someone. So, um, like Grand Tour, that's three weeks, three and a half weeks. Like it, can really make or break whether a race is good or not for you, just as in like an experience if you're with a good roommate. So it is something that's actually thought about quite hard from the team, because it, it's a performance. Um, it is a performance thing to think about. You know, happy riders are fast bike riders. So anyway, I'm late for dinner, so I'm gonna go get some dinner. They do some viciously good desserts here. Baklava, I think it's called. Um, don't know the calorie content, don't want to know, but 200K tomorrow, so we're gonna have a big dinner. We're gonna, half, we're gonna have to half a pen. Nah, no, that's all yours, mate. <laughs> I, when it comes to instant, I only drink Nessa, Nespresso, um, Nescafe Espresso Blend oh. Gold. Disrespectful to Cafe Valentine. Oh, uh, you gone for the Cafe Valentine. You're a brave man. Every coffee snob knows that that's, that's not the go. I don't know what you've got in your cup. It's rich and smooth, but it's white, so I don't think it's coffee. <laughs> rich, smooth and white. Oh, I think it's glorified milk. It's far too early to be going to a bike race, but here we are. Breakfast in like, these hotels, the, the coffee's not. Coffee's not good. Did we just miss our bus? We're gonna be like snobs about it and just say we miss our bus, but we'll manage, we'll survive. Today's race has, mm, on paper, not really sure because there is a couple of climbs a bit closer to the finish than the non-climber sorts would would like. That 30k to go, 4k, 8%, like that's a climb, but the question is, who's gonna go hard up it? Who's gonna try and rip it apart? Our thoughts maybe are Arkea, because Buani can climb. And he's got Quintana here as well, so try and thin out the GC from day one. Perhaps it's kind of the only team that we think might, but then there's teams like Caja Rural and, and BH who 
have more climbers here and that's you know not so many oh BH of make you make you rhyme so yeah not quite sure who's going to actually light it up and it's on a highway so there's it could just be like a boom, we ride up it at a steady pace bike exchange you've got Caden Groves here who very much can climb and sprint but the thing is can his team is he going to want his team with him at the finish I don't know I mean his team aren't his team here are a full-blown lead-out team. I don't think they're a team that's could, that will want to light it up on a climb. Yeah, we just don't know. We have a lead-out plan, but we also have a contingency plan, um, which is to not lead out and try and win the race with whoever's left, um, whether it be that guy, Corbin, or Paddy Bevan, or Rick Zabel. So we're gonna go get an our, our mini bus, maybe our party bus. Like here, the Tour of Turkey gives you a little bus. Last year it was a Mercedes Sprinter, like a party bus that you'd go, you'd rent out to go on a stag or hen do. It was like, I think any more extreme, it would have had a pole in the middle of it. Like there was lots of LED lights and yeah, uh, it looked like it had seen some fun times. Um, so uh, we're gonna go get in the bus and head to the start. What's that, Brandley? I can just tell you something. I'm on my way back. I'm coming up. No. And here's some clips of Brandley saying exactly the same thing in the last three races we've been a part of. Today I can tell you like on top of the climb, like Rick, I can see him, he was like six or seven positions in front of me. Yeah. About 200 meters away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because it was a gap. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah. But actually, Paddy was trying to slow the whole peloton down yeah. for us all. He was like, hey guys, Matthias is dropped, can you please wait? <laughs> <laughs> and then they all felt sorry for him, so they waited. But I mean, you cannot go slower than slow, but Matthias didn't make, the, didn't make his way back. You know, my girlfriend always say, it have to be progression, don't come too fast. So that's why I do a slow build up. No. <laughs> don't come too fast. Paddy Bevan almost won the race. Rick also almost won the race. Alex Dalsett almost won the race. Alex Dalsett was doing so well until I decided to have a lie down on the downhill. It, it was going too well. It's my fault. I've been saying lately that it's been an awful long time since I've crashed by my own accord. Drew number 13 for this race and um, I didn't put them upside down. So that's obviously the reason and the slippery Turkish folks. There was an awful lot of crashes today, both in a straight line and on the downhill. I even said that to Kel O'Brien. I was like, there's been a lot of crashes, there's gonna be a lot of bandages in the peloton. But yeah, decent, decent starting day. It's quite a hard day. Does anyone see what their average power was for the day? Not so much, 210. Yeah, 212. It felt harder than that. Because we went on or off. Yeah. Like, I think my normal power was close to 300. Ah, that makes sense. We also have to say, like, it's a long time that Rick did a top five. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's good uh, how he's been today. I'm happy for him. Like, for me, one thing is important because so far this year, like, we always have a competition competition in the leader. I mean, Matthias is not competing this year, but uh, <laughs> Alex Alex had a top five in Tirreno Adriatico, which is a world two race, I have to admit. But now with my fourth place today, like, I'm one step higher, so I'm leading. I'm leading again. That's, that's very important for me. You also, does that mean now you're also the best rider from Cologne? Has Nils had a result? Top five? Uh, you were your fifth, so it's uh, E3. Oh, but you've had a fourth. Yeah, yeah. So I'm leading the Cologne competition right now, I would say. Yeah. Andre, Andre had no results so far. No, Yuri also. Yuri also? No, yeah. Yuri. Yuri was one time in the breakaway in Omlop at Newsblood, and since then he has knee, uh, knee injury. Yeah, so you are the the Lion of like Cologne all, once more. In all competitions, I want to lead, I'm leading right now. In yeah. the leader competition and in the Cologne competition. Paddy. So now the next, don't expect too much from me in the next three months now. <laughs> Paddy, <laughs> you lead in the Kiwi competition. 
No. No, I'm not. Who's leading that? Because uh, Corbyn wasn't uh, strong today. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dion, Dion Smith, I reckon, is leading the Kiwi Cup. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Second at the uh, Alfredo Pasta uh, one day race. Yeah. Uh, did you go, Corbyn? Were you strong? No, nah, not so strong. Were you the best strong in the race? Uh, my brother didn't start, so oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so you were the strongest strong. Apparently. And Guy Nev's winning the Israel competition as well. <laughs> so we're, we've got a lot of winners here today. Uh, the main competition is uh, there. <laughs> so like when you crash like this, your hemophilia doesn't affect you, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Okay. No. I have no medication, only so... If you have like big crash if you have broken bones or what's, what's yeah going? yeah then everyone then everyone panics a little bit who are you taking video of yeah. me or what oh okay. yeah yeah for the channel and for the lawyer <laughs> for the lawyer <laughs> so this will be okay. fine by tomorrow yes yeah i'll get a message soon <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna show something today I think today I'm, I'm going to show something. The shape has the shape has arrived. We've been waiting for months. <laughs> I know I have been telling this for really a long time, but uh, now I think it's really it's really time, and uh, I feel the shapes are coming because I found out this morning uh, my hairs are getting less and less, you know. Yeah. But uh, you need to brush it. Rick, Rick, Rick said it. maybe I should stay one you extra week in uh, yeah, yeah. Turkey, but. Uh, <laughs> No, but I can tell you, my girlfriend, she's so in love with me, also if I have no hair anymore, she's still in love. So, no. Who cares about some hair? Stage two. Um, wet roads, like, turkey roads are slippery enough. Wet turkey roads, well that could be fun. Big laid out, maybe some crosswinds beforehand. Hopefully some crosswinds, I think we're going to try and take it on. So, um, oh look, it's a kiwi party. Only kiwis are invited. Yeah, so, uh, stage two. Here we go. We're at the start of stage three. Stage two was just carnage. Crashes everywhere, all the time. It was mental. And we mostly, Rick had a little get down, um, but he's fine. Branley has a small graze on his knee, so he's making a fuss. Um, Paddy rode in like third for the whole day, and he's very <laughs> smug at how much he stayed out of trouble. The lead out was going fantastically until, it, until there was a crash with 3.2k to go, and our lead out then became getting Rick back to the front, back to third, um, wheel, where back to, back to third wheel, where Paddy was, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then we, uh, yeah, uh, Nairo's still here, Nairo had two get downs, um, lost a minute and three quarters, which will make things interesting, if he's got ambitions to win this race, he has to go early on the climb tomorrow to try and win GC, because he's a minute 45 down now, on Paddy, who will be sat third wheel. Yeah. Today is short, 118, and could be crosswinds. Maybe, maybe. There's been a lot of promise of crosswinds, but so far not much has actually been delivered. And we're sprinting for this guy over here. It's a man. The big problem with Rick's sprint yesterday is Rick didn't have Rick as a lead out man. So, uh, I mean, Rick is regarded by Rick as one of the best lead out men in the world. Hey, on, the, on, the on the team website, Nikki Zero says top five. Which is like an insult to me. <laughs> Actually, if we're talking about heartbreak, you know, Benoit Cosnefois yeah. was given the Amstel gold win and then had that cruelly taken away from him. You were given fourth place on stage one and then had that cruelly taken away from you. What an injustice. Yeah. It's like if this would have been a pistol, and that would have been the commissar, I would have been like, I would have shot him. <laughs> Stay straight. Here we go. And that 
that's stage three done. Nice short 118k. Not much happened, to be honest, until the sprint at the end. We we came early, then just got a little bit. Uh, it all came unraveled right at the end, really. What what's quite difficult when I made an error by uh, we had control through the. There was a turnaround point with 1.7k to go. Us and Bike Exchange were first into there and then um, in the Bike Exchange ride I had a little sh a slip because the roads here are slippy. And so I had control out of it, but I, what I should have done was got over to one side immediately, but I didn't. But I did, did a turn and then that then uh, gave us a difficulty because then we in a lead out, what you don't want is a situation where you've got teams either side of you, which suddenly is exactly what we had, because bike exchange, they are fast. Like, they have some serious pace at the moment. Branley and I were up against um, Hep Michael Hepburn and Kel O'Brien, and yeah, we, we had to go long because we are just a little bit down on numbers compared to um, a couple of the other teams that have bought like we, we've bought GC and lead out here. Whereas some other teams have bought full full lead out. So we have to be smart. And I don't think today we were as smart as we could have been. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. You have, to, you have to make the best of what you got. Yeah, it did about a minute, minute 30 or minute 40, including a dead turn at 570 odd watts, which was fine. It was good. Yeah, and then just, uh, like I said, didn't, um, should have just shut the door. But, uh, yeah, it was too nice. It was too nice. And then, but the problem was, then we had DSM on our left, bike exchange on our right, not much space to move. And when I was starting to really slow down, that meant um, Corbin, who was behind me, couldn't get, actually couldn't get past me to then start his turn which then sent the sprint train back into the sort of the wash, which, uh, yeah, wasn't wasn't super ideal, but it'll come together. We've got more opportunities, live and learn. It will come, it will come. So uh, tomorrow uh, is a mountaintop finish and Paddy's looking real good. So we're gonna set him up, see how he goes. And then um, with big discussions on wheels, like one of the big things that like I've been pondering with the technical sort of with enjoying the technical side of cycling that I do is like a rider like say Michael Woods if you have a hilly day and you're trying to win the race there's, there's two factors at play one of which is energy saving what's the most efficient way of getting through that stage and the other one is winning it like the point that you need to win the race so and if you're looking at energy saving you know if you like tomorrow's 140 or 150k um if you're looking at energy saving throughout the day you'd take the aero wheels but at the point that um we want to try and win the race like the final climb you'd take the lightweight wheels because it's uh kind of 14k at eight percent or something it's it's a or seven percent average it's a nasty old climb so um it's a real conundrum as to as to what's best because i don't think it's a simple it's a simple solution perhaps a bike check more bike changes are the answer it's one i've been kind of thinking about quite a lot over the last uh, over the last year or so and trying to get to the bottom of working out how to determine what is the fastest setup for trying to win a race i mean to just get through a race as best case scenario is easy. You go with the aero setup because you can ride slowly up the hill, providing time cuts of no uh, of no concern. Yeah, if you're trying to actually win the race, then that poses a whole different set of questions. So, just my thought of the day. Corbin's getting a good old uh, introduction to the lead out. It was referred to today by Rick as Corbin weak instead yeah. of Corbin strong, but it wasn't your fault. You know, these things happen. Oh, well, three, three from three uh, haven't gone so well, so well, hopefully tomorrow's a bit better. <laughs> tomorrow you don't yeah, have to I'm lead out. Of hill. Tomorrow you don't have to lead out at all. Anyway, I'm going to close this one again. Thanks again to Win Your Dream Bike for 
supporting this, supporting Little Bleeders, and um, yeah, I like all the details you need to enter that are below in the description. And I hope you win it because. Uh, or what I didn't mention before, what I have since found out is the bike comes with Ultegra, the new 12-speed Ultegra. So that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good setup. Actually, better setup than we're on because we're still on the 11-speed. Um, so I might enter. Thanks for watching.